Okay, so for this first project, you're gonna need one of these picture frames that you can pick up from the Dollar Tree. As you can see, it comes with a little stand, if that's what you wanna call it. It's just basically a dowel rod that fits into a hole on the back. But hey, it does its job. And we're gonna remove the picture of the cute little doggies. Then we're gonna give it a coat of Waverly Wax. Now we're just gonna give it a coat of Waverly Antique Wax. And once I go over each area, I'm gonna wipe it off with a paper towel. And it's gonna leave a real pretty like look to this wood. I don't know, I know it's not like real wood, but maybe it is, I'm not sure. It's just real balsa wood, I guess. But once you wipe this antique wax off, it I like this diamond, I don't know, pattern comes out on the wood. You can see here once I wipe it off anyways, it looks real pretty. So I'm going to go over the entire frame and I'm going to do this to the front and the back of the frame. Now, once our frame is all painted and wiped down, this is what you should have after it's dried. And I'm just going to set that to the side and now we're going to work on this butterfly flower hanger. And all I want is the butterfly off of this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to break the weld, which is easy to do. But you just want to be very careful when you do it. All you have to do is just bend the butterfly forward and that weld will pop right off. I didn't show it just because it did take some time. And you want to be very careful when you do it so that you don't cut yourself on the metal. We don't need the hanger part, so we're just going to set that to the side. And then we're going to take our butterfly and we're just going to glue it onto our frame. Now what happened here is when I was taking it off the hanger, I uh, popped off the antenna, the antenna, is it? So I just glued it back on and now I'm just taking some gel super glue and I'm putting it on the back of the butterfly along with some hot glue and I'm just going to glue it right to the center of this frame. After I glued it down, I'm just taking a baby wipe and wiping off all the excess um, super glue that may have leaked out. Now I'm going to take some of this greenery and I'm sitting here trying to figure out how I wanted to put it on my frame. I, I knew I wanted to use it, so I decided to make a swag out of it and put it at the bottom of the butterfly so it kind of looks like grass. So I just put two pieces of this together. Together? I just put two pieces of this together and tied it with some jute twine. So after I make my little swag and I tie it together, I'm just gonna hot glue it down there at the bottom. And then once I have that hot glued, I'm gonna just take some extra pieces of the greenery and glue it on top of that uh, jute twine so you can't see it. And it was at this point that she knew she screwed up. Yep, I put the butterfly on the wrong side of the frame as you can see here. So now I have to improvise the stand by gluing it onto the back. Anyway, once I got over that moment, I took me a piece of scrapbook paper because I decided that I wanted to put some something behind the butterfly. And I had this galvanized looking scrap paper from Hobby Lobby. So I decided to cut me off a piece and glue it to the back and put the picture back in to the frame. And that will make this one complete. Let me know what you think by giving me a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and don't forget to hit that notification bell so you'll be notified of all my uploads because I don't think you guys are getting notified. So make sure you hit that. Okay, so for this project, you're gonna need one of these chalkboards that you can get from the Dollar Tree from Jot. And this is a little hummingbird um, wind chime that you can also get from the Dollar Tree. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take the chain off and the bell off this hummingbird. And then we're going to glue it onto our chalkboard by using some super glue and some hot glue. Now once I have the hummingbird glued onto my chalkboard, I'm going to take this printable that I printed off Cricut Design Space. And it's a quote from Dr. Seuss. All I did was just type out the text and used my font, which I'll put in the description box below. And it says, Think and Wonder, Wonder and Think by Dr. Seuss. And I also added two little hummingbirds where the O's and Wonder were supposed to go, which I thought was really cute. And then once I have that transferred onto my chalkboard, 
I'm going to add these little floral picks that I also got from the Dollar Tree because I want it to look like the hummingbird is visiting the florals for some sweet nectar. So I'm going to take this green leaf off. At first I thought I wanted it on there, but then I didn't think it looked right. It looked too busy. And I decided on a bow instead. Okay, so now I'm going to take this clothespin, I'm going to take it apart, and I love using clothespins as stands because they're so easy to take apart and glue onto your piece, and plus they stand up. I mean, I don't ever worry about them falling over by using clothespins. So I just took the clothespin apart, and I'm just going to glue one clothespin to the bottom, and then I'm going to glue the other clothespin in a V-shape formation, and then add some extra glue to make sure it holds, and that makes this project complete. Give me a big thumbs up. I really appreciate it because it helps my channel grow. Okay, so for this project, I'm using one of these Merry Christmas trucks that you can get at Christmas time from the Dollar Tree. Or you can use any one of their trucks that they come out with now a lot lately. And I'm just going to take this truck apart because I'm not, even though I'm not using this side, I don't want that sticking up because it sticks over the, the truck like it wasn't made evenly. But now I am going to take off these rims or the hubcaps or the hub, whatever you want to call it. And I'm going to save those because we are going to use those. So be really careful when you take those off not to break them and I'm going to set those to the side but anything else you take off here if you break it it's not a big deal because we're not using it right away even though I am trying not to break the Christmas tree because I know I can reuse that at Christmas time but everything else it doesn't matter but let me tell you about this Christmas tree though it was impossible to take off I had to edit out a lot of that because it took me about half an hour to take this Christmas tree off if I was smart I would have used my heat gun and melted the glue but I wasn't thinking, so instead I made this big gouge in the truck where I have to use my spackling to fill in these holes so that when we paint over it, you can't see it. Anyways, once the spackling's dry, I took this, like, limeade green and this white, and I mixed it together to kind of mute it, to kind of get me a more pastel color. And I'm going to paint the entire truck in this paint, and I'm going to give it two coats, and I'm also going to paint the hubs with the same paint. Once all the paint's dry, I'm just going to glue some of this back together. I'm going to glue the hubs back down where I want them. And then um, once I have those glued on, I'm going to take some Waverly paint in ink and I'm going to paint the tires in ink. Now you can also see where I started to paint the hubs in black. Then I decided I didn't want that in black. So before you paint those in black, don't because I'm going to go back over it with the green because I just didn't like it. I just thought it was too much black. So I decided to do something else with the hubs. Anyways, just paint the round part of the tire black. Don't paint the hub. So after I painted back over the hubs with my green, I took this yellow acrylic marker and I decided to make polka dots on the hubs. Because, you know, why not? This is going to be a cute little flower truck. So once I did that, I then took my white acrylic marker and I started doing some stitching all around the truck. So I went around the entire truck with the white acrylic marker. So put you on some good music or a new show that you haven't seen yet or an old show that you're binging and get to stitching. And I did have to go over this twice with my white paint marker to really get that stitching to show up on the green. And then I decided to go around my wheels with the white stitching 
and I made the wheels a little differently. I went around the outside with white stitching and then I went around the inside with my yellow acrylic marker and made another circle of stitches so that the wheels look kind of 3D, I guess, kind of, I don't know. It just made it look a little more realistic because just plain black wheels kind of looks plain. And then you notice on my window, I did go around it with the white acrylic, but I decided I wanted to use the yellow. So I went back over that with the yellow acrylic marker. So then I took this printable from Cricut Design Space. I did find this in the design space. It says fresh flowers, homegrown. I just printed it out and transferred it onto the truck. Then once I have that transferred onto my truck, I'm going to take some sandpaper and I'm going to scuff this truck up to make it look old. Now this is what you should have once you go over it with sandpaper. I thought it turned out so good. I love the way it turned out. And I realize I even rubbed some of the lettering off of my um, vinyl decal, but that's okay. It just makes it look more realistic. Now I'm just going to take a variety of flowers that I had in my stash and I'm going to glue those on the back side of the truck. Now once I have all my flowers glued down, I just took some craft paper and I'm just covering up the back, covering up all the nasty paint and the Merry Christmas because, you know, I like to have my projects complete. And then I'm just fluffing out my flowers so that they're actually kind of flowing over the front of the truck. Because when I glued it on, I kind of glued the flowers and they were pointed towards the back. But anyways, I ended up fixing them. And then I'm just going to take two, two tower tumbling blocks and glue those onto the wheels. And once I have those glued onto the wheels, you have two perfect stands and a standing flower truck. project I'm taking this birdhouse um, I think I ended up getting this at Hobby Lobby and I'm just taking off the wire part because we're not gonna hang it so I just took that out and I'm using my favorite color wash tint and weathered copper and I'm gonna paint both of the birds in this and I gave the birds two coats and like I said if you've never seen me use this this um, wash is super easy to use you don't have to wipe it off you don't have to use any water you just let it dry and you can add as many coats as you want to get the desired effect. And I only ended up adding two coats of this to the birds. Then once I have the birds painted with my color wash tint, I'm going to take this espresso brown, or I, th I can't remember what it was called, and I'm going to paint the entire birdhouse in this. Now, like I said, this color wash tint, you don't have to wipe down, but I did end up wiping this off with a wet baby wipe so that it wouldn't be so dark after I had it all painted. So once all the paint's dry, this is what you should have, or after the color wash is dry. Now I'm gonna take this sign that I also got from the Dollar Tree. I love this, this is actually a really good sign on its own. But I'm gonna take it apart and add my own little touch to it. I love the bead hanger, like you don't even have to make a hanger for this, right? So anyways, I took out the inside of the picture frame and I have this piece of scrapbook paper that I got from Hobby Lobby. And I'm just gonna cut it down to size to fit the frame insert. And I'm just gonna use regular glue to glue that on and trim off all the excess. Once that's all glued on, we're just going to put the photo insert back into the frame. And that's what you should have, real pretty background. And then I'm just going to take the birdhouse and I'm going to hot glue it onto the picture background. Picture frame background? Whatever you want to call it. We're going to glue it back in there. 
Now I'm just going to take some Excelsior and put it in the hole of the birdhouse to make it look like a nest. And I also wanted to point out I did not paint the frame because I wanted that contrast between the natural wood and the painted wood in my birdhouse. And then I just put my little birdies there and that makes this project complete. Let me know what you think. <music>Project, I'm using one of my new favorite finds from the Dollar Tree. If you haven't seen that haul video, I'll put that in the cards above and in the description box below. And I'm using the smallest hoop, which is the six inch hoop. And I'm also using one of these garden stepping stones. I think that's a great find also. They're real sturdy stepping stones. And I'm just going to add some of my gel super glue to this hoop ring and I'm going to attach it to the top of the stepping stone. And it just kind of makes it a really cute round tray and it fits perfectly onto this, it really does. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some florals that I have in my stash and I'm going to start gluing those all around my stepping stone. And while I'm doing that, I'm also going to take some nautical rope and I'm going to start gluing that around it also to kind of cover up all the nasty hot glue from the flowers and to cover up the stems of the flowers. And it's also just going to add a little more, um, it's just going to make this piece a little more solid too. So you'll see what I'm going to do. I'm just going to alternate. I'm using the white florals and then I'm going to go and use some of the lavender or they call it something else. I don't know what it's called. It kind of looks like lavender to me, but then it just looks like a thing of seed, <laughs> purple seeds. So I really don't know. But anyways, they're pretty either way. And so I'm just going to alternate those to make me a real pretty round tray. And that's all there is to this project. If you want to hang it, you can also add more nautical rope to the back and add a hanger to it, which I did in case I do want to hang it up. But I'm basically going to use this in my um, other tray that I have on my ottoman to hold my candle or whatever else I decide to put in it. Because why not? It's a tray. I can put whatever I want in it. Here you can see. I have all the flowers and all the nautical rope around my tray. See how pretty it turned out? I just love it. And that's all there is to this project. You guys, if you enjoy my videos, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And also don't forget to hit that notification bell so you'll be notified of all of my uploads. And leave me a comment. I love to chat with you guys and get to know everybody. So leave me a comment in the comment section down below and let me know what your favorite part of spring is. Is it the extra daylight, the longer days, the flowers, the birds? For me, it's everything. Winter makes me so depressed, so I'm so excited for spring this, 